Hi, I'm Steve. I'm just a bloke on his farm. After being here for 10 years now, the way we do things have changed in that time. When we first started, I used as a model for what we did a TV show from the BBC called Victorian Farm. If you haven't seen it, it's brilliant. Check it out. But the purpose behind it was that they did everything as it would have been done in the 1850s, uh, which didn't really need a lot of equipment like we have today. Hence the scythe. And the reason for that is I wanted to be as self-sufficient as I could, provide all the food, look after the animals as much as I could without using modern machinery. machinery. So if the world did ever go down the toilet, I'd be able to do it and look after myself and my family as well. So that's how we started off, using really rudimentary tools like this, and we just got on with it. But things have evolved. Going back nine or ten years now, in the field behind me here, we harvested, we, we planted and harvested an acre of wheat because it was always a romantic idea of mine to see the golden wheat blowing in the summer breeze. So we did everything by hand. I planted by hand, I sowed the seed by hand, it grew uh, with very little attention from me and then I got hold of a local farmer and his three boys and they came and helped me harvest it. And we did it with this. We spent a day and a half cutting it down and then we spent an entire day picking it up. And it was backbreaking. And I gotta say, I never wanna do it again. Way too hard. But I proved to myself I can do it. The rewarding thing about that whole episode was the fact that I now know that I can do it. If there is ever a shortage on diesel fuel or tractors or contractors or anything else, I know how to do it. I've done it, uh, I've got the skills to do it, and I can uh, replicate it and do it again if I need to. Do I want to right now? Absolutely not. It was backbreaking, it was dirty, it was filthy. And it was really, really tiring, but rewarding nonetheless. This field of hay behind me, once upon a time, would have been cut with exactly this for centuries before now. And what they would have done, they would have had a sharpening stone, and every few feet, they would just sharpen the stone, sharpen the blade, and cut again. That's how the hay would have been cut. It all kind of falls in a line, which is the equivalent of today's modern windrows. It would have been allowed to dry out in the sun for a few days, and then a team of people would come and rake it up, turn it over, and then eventually put it in a cart and take it off to the barn. <laughs> is cutting down my hay field. Let's go give the cows a treat. They've been super alert ever since that mower arrived on the property. We've got that buzzing sound going. So let's give them a little bit of grain. Makes a change from the grass that they've been eating. And of course, 
what we give to the cows, we have to give to the sheep too. So let's go check on them as well. Because these guys have been hand reared since they were babies, they come to a bucket and they love putting their head in and trying, trying to get the last of the grain out. See, they all fight for flakes. Now check it. He's trying to push me over. I said when I first harvested that field of wheat with the scythe it took me about a day and a half and that was a, that was about an acre and it was that field right behind me there way in the distance that's about an acre well as I said I proved myself proved to myself that I could do it and from then we moved on to getting a little what they call a, a finger mower or a sickle mower for the back of my tractor my little tractor and that changed things a little bit it was quite good and I bought all my, my own haymaking equipment so I bought the, the, the mower I bought a rake and I bought the baler a little square baler and all was quite good uh, until one year the grass grew really thick and strong as it's getting stronger and thicker every year with our management of it and the poor little finger mower couldn't cut through it it would clog every two or three feet and I would have to jump down unclog it, get back in the tractor, come forward another two feet, jump down, unclog it, and I ended up with a right royal mess. It was awful. So with all that clogging and messing going on, we persevered and we did it for four or five years doing it that way. Uh, getting little square bales, me standing out in the middle of the field in 30 degree heat, trying to unclog a machine, taking hours literally hours to do this area of, uh, of grass. I was convinced to turn to uh, a, con a contractor and instead of doing it the way I've been doing it, we're getting little square bales, sometimes two, three, four hundred of them. Each one I would have to pick up, put on the back of a trailer and cut off to the barn. I got convinced and persuaded to turn to round bales and using a contractor. So that's what I did this year. Yesterday morning, he turned up. He cut everything you can see behind you, which is five acres. He did that in 45 minutes. 45 minutes. I had time to say hello, go inside, have a shower, come out, he was done. And look at this. So that's been our revolution in haymaking over the last 10 years. We've gone from doing it with a scythe, to a finger mower, to getting a contractor in with this monster machine, to come and do that. So would I do it any other way? I'm glad I did it the way I've done it. And I'll continue to use the contractor at the moment. Because once you get to this stage in your life, you realize that having a a strong back's important and you don't want to go and break it all the time using a scythe. And I would strongly recommend if you've got to 50 and you haven't ever used a scythe, don't bother using one now unless you have exceptional confidence in your back strength. It's not for the faint hearted, but it is fun. So I leave you my hayfield.
we'll be back in a few days to do the raking and the baling. Uh, for the moment, this needs to dry for a couple more days. As you can see, it's still a little green on the top, but um, I reckon two more days like this, and then we'll get the rake in, and then we'll be baling. So join me then. <laughs>